Hello everyone, my name is Sabrina Melodius and welcome to my channel. In today's video we are doing part 1 of a crochet along for a bag. And the bag that I am going to teach you how to make is going to be called the bag of madness. Yes, it is. And I will be explaining that as to why the name of the bag in a very short moment. Okay, so first I will discuss the name and after that I will discuss materials. So if you look at my table right now, you might be thinking, how crazy is this combination of color? Well, there is no specific combination of color because this bag is a bag of madness, right? So you have got to have as much variety of colors as you can. I am using bits of yarns that I don't really have any need for anymore. So I thought this would be absolutely perfect to use yarns that I will never use again. So the reason of the name, the bag of uh, madness is very simple. We have to think of this bag like a crazy thing. And you know why? I would like you to picture yourself in five or ten years time from now. And you're looking at your bag of madness thinking, yeah, wasn't that a crazy time back then when there was this, you know, COVID-19 going on? We all felt like we were going completely crazy with the self-isolation and different other things. So I think this is what I want you to think about this bag. This bag will represent what we're going through right now. Bag of complete and utter madness. So get yourself some yarns of any colors that you want, absolutely no color coordination whatsoever. Just join in and have some fun. I think this will be really good fun and who cares about color combination? I mean, you can if you want to make this bag of madness with just one color or, you know, create your own bag of whatever with lovely color combination. However, I don't. I simply want this to be a bag of complete and utter madness. So let's discuss materials. As you can see, I have got here an array of colors and I've got more in a bag. So what I'm going to do is, uh, every so often when I change colors, is I'm not going to look what color I'm going to reach out for. All the colors will be put in a bag and I'm going to do like a lucky dip. This is how I'm going to work it. So, try and get as many colors as you like. I'm using DK, but of course you can use medium number four weight yarn if you decide to, or you could go a smaller size yarn. It is entirely up to you. But however, I am just using my DK because I have a lot of DK and I want to use it up and this is a perfect excuse to use that yarn that you have no reason to use for anymore because you don't have enough to make a project, right? So, um, this is my material and I will be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. Let's see if you can see that. No, it's not going to uh, focus for me this time. There we are. 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. If you're using a uh, number 4 medium weight yarn, I would suggest a 5.5 millimeter hook. And I am not sure what that is in US terms, but I am sure you can find a conversion for a 4.5 or 5.5 millimeter hooks. In fact, I will be sure to add that information in the description box below. Okay, now that we have discussed materials and the reason why of the name of this bag, I will pause and I will be back to get started on this tutorial. Okay, so to begin this bag of madness, 
It is important to note that we need to start with the base of the bag. And to do the base of the bag, we need to do two of those shapes. And this determines the size of the bag that you are making. So this will be the width of my bag, and I am using DK and a 4.5 millimeter hook. If you want a larger bag, I guess that you could either use a number 4 weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook, and your bag will be significantly bigger. For myself, my bag will be 10 and a half inches wide. And also, there is another way to work it, is um, if you eliminate the, the curb here, just like so, this is where we are working the increases. If you totally eliminate that and work on there, this will be like a rectangle. You need to do a multiple of six stitches. So if you want your bag bigger, in here, I will explain that shortly when we start our starting chain. You will need to do a starting chain of um, multiple of six stitches. But I will explain that in a little moment. So now that we have this first shape done, I'm going to do the second shape with you. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to gather my materials to start on the second shape. Alright, so we are now ready to start. And we're going to work this um, base of the bag in three rounds. So the first round we're going to do is that round here in the middle, right here. And the way we're going to determine the size of the bag is simply how wide this um, bag is going to be. So we need to start with the initial chain. You're going to do a multiple of six chains. And would you believe I have just lost my yarn? Not to worry, I have got it now. <laughs> it simply fell on the floor. Okay, so we will start with a slip knot. And then you need to do a multiple of six chains. And I'm going to do 30 chains in total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm going to pause and I'll rejoin you in a second. Now that I have got my 30 chains, of course, if you are having the same number of chains as me, that's okay, we've got our 30 chains, and if you've got more, that's okay. Now that we've got our number of chains, all we have to do is add an additional five chains. So one, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to start our first round. So let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. That should be okay. So in the fourth chain from the hook, remember, never count that loop as a stitch or anything. It is absolutely nothing at all. But from the, the hook, you're going to go into the fourth chain. So one, two, three, and into this chain here, you're going to do two double crochet. And I'm going to assume that you know exactly how to do double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and into that chain, you're going to do two double crochet. So one and two. Okay, and now we're going to double crochet in the next 30 stitches. You see how easy it is so far? So one. two, three, four, and I am not going to do the 30 double crochets with you. I am simply going to pause and I will meet you when I've done my 30 double crochets. 
and I have my 30 double crochets so in that very last chain right here we are going to do 3 double crochet why is it not focusing at all today like every day <laughs> Every time I seem to do one of those, it just doesn't want to focus for me. Right, okay, in that very last chain here, as you see, we need to add three double crochet. So, one, two, and three. Now we're going to flip this uh, shape so we're going to work into the chain so into do not go into here because this is where we added our three double crochet but in the next 30 chains you need to do a double crochet in each chain remember not this one here where we put our three double crochet you start into the next one this one here this is our first of 30 double crochet so one oh I'm going to undo that one because I want to show you something you see that tail end I'm going to work over it because I do not want to be sewing any ends later on so I, I do not like to sew ends so the less that I can do the better so into that chain we're going to do our first double crochet There's our first one, and you're going to do that into the next, well, however many, until you've done all your chains. So, for me, it is 30 double crochet in total. So, I will meet you there. Now I've done my 30 double crochets on that side. This is what we have so far quickly I'm going to get rid of this tail so I've got my scissors and I'm just going to cut it off you see no sewing needed okay to close the first round we're simply going to go into the third chain see here where we started with our, with our chain three that counts as a double crochet we're going to focus <laughs> right into that third chain here we're going to just slip stitch to close the round there we are right here okay and there we are our first round is complete and now to start the second round we're going to chain three and this counts as a double crochet and into the same stitch we're going to add another double crochet because now we need to do some increases on the side right here so another double crochet into the same stitch and we're going to do two double crochet in each of the next two double crochet those will act as increases so into the next stitch here we're going to do two double crochet mm -hmm. I feel this is a bit too far right this might be better right okay so into that next stitch here we need to do two double crochet so one and two so, so far we've got two increases. We need to do a third one. So into the next stitch, into this one, we need to put in two double crochet. One and two. And now we're going to work 30 double crochet. When you've got your 30 double crochet, I will meet you there and tell you what to do. okay so now we have done half of the second round we've done here we've got some increases and then we've done our 30 double crochets 
So now that we've reached the other uh, side, we need to do some more increases on that side. So into the next three stitches, we need to do some increases. So two double crochet in each of the three stitches. So one and two. And into the next stitch, another two double crochet. One and two. And into the next stitch right here, we need to do another two double crochet. One and two. And now we need to carry on with our 30 double crochet. When we get to the end of this round two, I will show you what to do next. We have now reached the end of round two, so all we need to do now is join to the chain three, on top of the chain three, right here. So join with a slip stitch, and now this means that round two is complete, and this is what we have so far. And if you're worried a little bit about some curving here, do not worry about it. It will just straighten itself out. It is not a problem. So there we are. This is what we have so far. We have one more round to do, and then uh, after that, I will show you what to do with the two pieces. So let's carry on and begin round number three. And I will zoom back in now. OK, so let's get the yarn back. <laughs> and now we're going to work some further increases into the next uh, six stitches. So I will show you how to do that. So chain three, there we are. And into the same stitch, you're going to do another double crochet. I'm going to see if I can get this sorted. It is so annoying. OK, is that better? Right, into that stitch, add another double crochet. Into the next stitch, just the one double crochet. And we've done our first increase in the next two stitches, just like so. OK, in the next stitch, we're going to do an increase. So put in two double crochet. One and two. And into the next stitch, just a one double crochet. And into the next one, we're going to do another increase. So two double crochet. One and Two. And into the next stitch, just the one double crochet. Now that we have done our increases, just like so, we are going to carry on and do 30 double crochet. Once you get to the 30 double crochet, I will tell you what to do next. OK, so half of round three is now made. I've done my 30 double crochet, and I'm at the other end now of the round. So we need to do our final increases for this particular base for the bag. So into the next stitch right here, this one, we need to do two double crochet. One and two. And into the next stitch, we need to do just a one double crochet. Into the next stitch, we need to do two double crochet. One and two. And into the next stitch right here, we need to do just a one double crochet. And now we need to do into this next stitch our final increase. So two double crochet, one and two. And into the next stitch here, it is just a one double crochet. 
Now that we finished our increases, we need to finish the round three. So to do that, we need to do 30 double crochet and slip stitch on top of the chain three. When you've done that, that concludes the base, the second base. So I will join you then and I will show you what to do with the both pieces. Okay, now that I have finished the third round of this piece, we will bring the other one back here. Do not fasten off that yarn just yet. But now we have both, we need to unite them together to make a nice strong base. So what you're going to do is, I will just show you here, you're going to put the wrong sides together. So this is the right side and this is the right side. So you're going to flip this one around so the wrong side is facing you and the right side, this one, is facing you. Therefore both sides are together and now both right sides are facing us whichever way we are turning this around. And what we're going to do now is join them together. So you need to make sure that all the stitches are going to um, coordinate together here as you can see. So I'm going to see where my stitches are. Let's see now. So this is where I joined my stitch and where will that be on here? Let us see. Uh, I will pause and I will be right back. So here's the piece where we finished when our uh, working yarn is still attached. So put that to one side because we need to figure out something. So get this piece back again with the right side in front of you. And now we need to work out from the increases um, the stitch that we're going to join to the other piece. So you see where that first uh, increase is right here? Then we've got a double crochet, then we've got our second increase right here, then a double crochet, and now third double crochet increase here and a double crochet. In that double crochet, you need to add a stitch marker. That way you will know exactly where we're going to join onto the other piece. So now that you've done that, you're going to turn that one just like so, so that the wrong side is facing you. And now we are ready to join both pieces together, just like so. And to do that, we are going to join both pieces just like so. That piece here, we're going to go through the back loop of every stitch. And at the same time, on the other piece, we're going to go through here on the front loop that is facing us right here on every stitch. So I will show you how to do that right now. Okay, so we are now ready to uh, attach both um, sides together. So into that very stitch that we slip stitched uh, to finish the round, into the back loop of this stitch, we're going to insert our hook, just like so. And into the other piece where we put our stitch marker into that stitch, through the front loop only, we're going to put our hook. And now we have three loops there, so we just need to do a slip stitch. There we are, and that's just to attach it. So now we're going to chain three and this is going to act as a double crochet. And into the next stitch right here, we are going to put our hook in here. Don't forget to uh, yarn over because it's going to be a double crochet. So into that back loop right here and into the next stitch of the piece, but through the front loop only. There we are. And now we're going to complete our double crochet. I'm going to do that one more time. So into the back loop of that first piece, you're going to insert your hook. And into the next piece, 
but through the front loop only we are going to add the hook there and now complete your double crochet and we're going to do this all the way around and you will see why we have done that when you have completed this round so I'm going to pause, I will let you carry on and it's just basically a, a double crochet all around no increases anymore just simply double crochet into both of these loops simply to just um, unite them so I will let you carry on this round and when you finish that I will join you and tell you what to do next so now that I have done all my stitches all around all I need to do is finish this round by doing a slip stitch so into the third chain you're going to join with a slip stitch to close this round see it really is that simple so I am doing my slip stitch it's a little bit tighter this time I'm not too sure why okay now we'll do it no, I am completely struggling this time <laughs> okay, I'll just do it that way perfect there we are, now that we've done that we can uh, cut our yarn because this concludes uh, the base of the bag we are now done this is it and it should look like a little gondola I will try and zoom out so get rid of this uh, end if you can oh I am losing my needles that's okay I know where it went so I will pick it up in a moment so if you weave in your end like I'm doing just now and then I will show you something nearly done there we are and you will not know where the ends are okay cut the yarn that's perfect and this is what we have so far and as you will see this will be the right side of our bag and it will be the right side and the outer side and look what we've just created like a little ridge here so that our bag can sit nicely just like so when it is on the floor or on the chair or wherever you want it to be so there we are part one is now concluded part two we will start to work on the body of the bag so I hope that you will join me and enjoy so thank you everyone for watching and until the next time happy knitting and crochet everyone